same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, so there's a better
worship with us today? Give God the glory. Oh, give God the glory. Oh, give God the glory. And he will give. Be worth it all, so beautiful, happy day. 
tell him, say, it's going to be worth it all. Come on, look at him and tell him, say, it's going to be worth it all. The trial or the test that you're going through, it's not going to compare to the glory. Feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. You just need to declare in your spirit, it's going to be worth it all. I may not understand it now, but I'll understand it better by and by. Because some glad morning, when this life is over, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. sing the old ones a whole lot probably not nearly as enough elder as we should but I remember we used to sing songs about heaven oh I want to see him just to look upon his face we used to sing songs like everybody will be happy over there I don't know if you realize it or not but you're not going to have a decision to be made when you get to heaven when you walk through the pearly gates you're going to be happy yes. everybody brother josh will be happy over there don't go old school today some of these younger ones up here are saying oh lord please no the older crowds and the, and the saints in the crowd are saying, sing it to us.
aren't you thankful today that the King of Kings showed up one morning? It was a glorious day. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. There's an anticipation that begins to rise up within us as we begin to sing these songs because this world is not my home. I'm just here for a little while. Brother Darrell, I'm just passing through. I don't know, but as you begin to look around at this crazy world that we live in, the Bible says that we need to comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming soon. You need to tell your family, Jesus is coming soon. It's not to scare them. It's, it's to comfort them so that they can understand we've got to get ready because Jesus is coming soon. that God impressed upon you as we were singing that God would reveal himself strong to them today it may be a family member it may be a co-worker just an acquaintance it may be your neighbor that the Lord has impressed upon you somebody and would you lift that name up before the Lord right now because we are living in the end of times he is coming very soon the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound. And those that are ready are going to be caught to meet him in the air. But would you pray right now for just the next moment or two that God would quicken in their spirit, that God would arrest their attention today, that he would tug on their heartstrings, that he would draw them. God, we pray today collectively as the body of Christ. 
God, you know each and every person, Lord, that we are connected with, that they're not ready today. If you were to come back, they're not ready to meet you. But God, we pray today, would you encourage them? Would you draw them by your spirit? Would you quicken to them those moments that they've spent with you in past days, months, and years? In Jesus' name. And if you believe that God answers our prayer, would you thank him for it today? Would you just thank him for it? Would you just thank him for it today? Come on, praise him today. Praise him today. Come on, just praise him today. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you today. Amen, 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 amen. We're going to sing one more song, and then Brother Daryl Coffin's going to come and preach to us here today. And I want you to be receptive to the word of the Lord. I believe God's given him a message for us, and I want us to receive it with gladness. You can be seated if you'd like.
lift your hands all across this house and welcome the King of Kings into your heart, into your mind, into this temple, Lord. We welcome your presence and your power. God, it's your goodness, it's your glory, oh Lord, that's shining upon each and every person that's here today. We thank you today. We lift our hands in adoration to you, oh God. We lift our hands in worship to the King today. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. You're so good to us, Lord. Amen, amen. And it's great to have my good friend, Brother Daryl Coffin, and his family with us here at Calvary. Would you make him welcome today as he comes to minister the word to us? Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly good to be here today. Amen. Feeling the mighty presence of the Lord in this house. God is with us. I said God is with us. It doesn't take very long when we began to worship and we began to lift praises unto the master that we recognize that he is here we were talking just this week and in the conversation the subject came up about the presence of God and it was mentioned once again that he said where two or three are gathered together there am I in the midst of them and I'll go further and say I firmly believe that if I was the only one, if I was the only one in this world, he would have came from glory and given his life so that I could be free. Think about that. The love of God passes all understanding. He is so good today. Let's lift our hands once again. Lord Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here in the midst of your people today. We love you today. We worship you, God. We lift up our hands. We lift up our voices. We lift our hearts, God. We lift our spirits to you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you in all of our ways. Direct our paths today, we pray. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings today from the state of Delaware. My bishop, Brother Royce Andrus, and my pastor, Brother Joel Andrus. We bring you greetings today from Delaware. Amen. <clears throat> my heart, uh, my spirit, I'm kind of there, wondering what's going on in Delaware. But yet I'm here today, and I want to give everything I have in this service today, pour my heart out to you today of what God has given me out of his word. I want to leave something that we go, we have a motto in our church at Lighthouse and our whole reason for existence in this time today is connecting to God connecting to others and connecting others to God connecting to God connecting to others and connecting others to God. If you have your Bibles today, let's turn to the book of Mark, chapter 8. Mark, chapter 8. 
Beginning at verse 13, we'll read on down through verse 25. Mark chapter 8. I want to say what a privilege it is to be here today. Feeling the presence of God brings back some incredible memories of living up here. If you don't know who I am, I've, uh, I was born and raised here in the state of Maine. Grew up right here in Hamden. Went to Hamden Academy. And uh, Brother Andy was two years behind me in high school. They thought I was bad till he hit the doors. But his brother was ahead of me, so they had warning. <laughs> Amen. But uh, so, so good to be here. I remember uh, as a young man and teenager um, <clears throat> playing the trumpet in, in uh, church. and Brother Johnny was just a little guy. He sat right there on that front row, and I don't think his eyes went away from me. He saw every note, heard every mistake. <laughs> Amen. But it's so good, so proud of you, Brother Johnny, what God has done in your life. Amen. And time moves on. Brother Kennedy, so good to be here with you today. I told him, I wouldn't say it from the pulpit, but I've got, I've got to say it. I, I told my boys, we were talking this week, and I told them, I said, you know, it's going to be great to see Brother Kennedy again. I said, and all I've got to do is, is just mention a few words, and he'll go back in time, Sister Lynn. Amen. And those words were, going somewhere, boys? He'll know what that means. Yes, he caught us. Amen. Praise God. Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 13. And he left them and entered into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? And he cometh to Bethsaida, they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he spit on his eyes, put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I'm going to say this is going to be part two today. You heard part one in Sunday school class. My brother did an outstanding job in Sunday school. So proud of you, Kevin. Wow, that was that was incredible. <clears throat> Perception.
Well, I'm going to speak to you today on a subject similar to that. What do you see? What do you see? In this passage of Scripture today, just before you see it, matter of fact, my brother used this Scripture in his teaching this morning. Later on in this chapter, you find a man by the name of Bartimaeus. One touch. One touch. When I read this scripture, many people may ask the question, couldn't Jesus heal him the first time? According to scripture, the answer is yes. If I see the things that Jesus did, one touch of the master's hand is all it took. But in this passage of scripture, twice. Someone may say, what's the purpose? What's the reasoning behind this? We read the scripture today as you're seated. We read the scripture today. We kind of laid the foundation in reading this scripture. It was not only that the disciples would see what Jesus was doing, but also, as Brother Kevin so graphically and, and just expounded on perception. It was so the Pharisees and the ones from Herod that were standing around that they could perceive and not only perceive, but they could understand what was going on. If you remember what we read in our text today, Jesus even told the disciples that you would understand what is happening. And so he turns to this man that was blind and touches him. And he says, how do you see? Well, it's pretty good. I'd really like to say that I could find my way. I could make my way through the city, but I only see men as trees walking. And Jesus reaches out again and touches his eyes and tells him to look up. Now, what do you see? Oh, I see clearly. As my brother stated earlier today, it's all in perception. So I would ask the question today, here, in this church this morning, in this sanctuary, we've been in a beautiful place, in the presence of Almighty God, but I would ask the question today, what do you see? What do you see? In 1 Kings chapter 18, if you would turn with me in your Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 18, there is a story there that I would like to bring back to our memory, to our attention. We find, I'll kind of lay a platform and a, a uh, foundation for it, but we find Elijah back in 1 Kings chapter 18. And before this particular chapter, we find him running for his life hiding by a brook, and then God fed him with the ravens, and then we know the story of how God caused the ravens not to come anymore and the brook to dry up, and he said, Elijah, it's time to move on. And we come to this place in Kings chapter 18, and we all know the story. I call it the showdown, where the prophets of Baal up on the mountain, doing their thing, showing their power, so to speak, building their altar, worshiping their God. And the statement was made, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. And to the one that God answers by fire, let him be God. 
And so we know the story. Our Sunday school kids are in here now, and they know the story. What happened? They started building the altar. Got the altar built. Got it where they needed it. And those prophets of Baal built theirs first, and they began to chant, and they began to dance around that altar. They began to shout out to their God of Baal. Come on, come answer my fire. And they were doing their thing. But there was nothing that happened. Elijah let it go for a while. Finally, he'd had enough. He said, all right, it's time, boys. You sit down. He began to build that altar, and he said, oh, that's not enough. Water it down real good. They watered it down, brought the first barrel of water, brought the second barrel of water, brought the third barrel of water. That sacrifice is there on the altar. And surely you and I would look at it and we'd say, there's nothing going to happen. It's soaking wet. Matter of fact, there was so much water that the water was in the trench around the altar. No possible way for fire to burn the sacrifice. But all of a sudden, we see Elijah begin to lift his voice to heaven. And he begins to pray a prayer. And when he began to pray that prayer, in verse 36, it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Wow. And I've set that foundation to go on a little bit in this chapter and tell you a little bit more. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. When they saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. In verse 41, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. Folks, I want to let you know it's getting ready to rain. It's raining in the natural outside today, but it's fixing to rain here in the spirit today. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to pour out his spirit. But my question to you today is, what do you see? So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth. Put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked. And he said, There is nothing. Nothing. And he said, go again. Not just once. Seven times. I've got a feeling that that servant came back after the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth time. And told the man of God, this is crazy. There is absolutely nothing. 
Well, what are you looking for? I would ask you the question today. What are you looking for? What are we looking for today? Are we looking for who's in church today? Are we looking for, well, maybe they'll come today, maybe not. Are we coming for that? Or are we looking for God to meet us when we walk through the doors? And if we are looking for God to meet us when we walk through those doors, what do you see? All about perception. What do you see today? Oh, I feel the presence of God in this house. If we could only look up and see that God is with us. His presence is with us. Uzziah said, or he said, uh, Isaiah said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Isaiah, why did you say that? Uzziah was a mighty man of power. He was a mighty king of that day. And everything in the kingdom flowed through Uzziah. But when the mighty man of the kingdom was taken out of the way, then Isaiah said, Oh, in the day, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Today, in this place, I feel in my spirit that there are people that sit under the sound of my voice today, that there may be mighty things in your life that God says, you know what, some of those things may need to die, and when they die, you then will see the Lord high and lifted up. You will see him where he needs to be. You will see him where he really, really is. Today in this place, I read the text in our hearing this morning in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, this man that was blind, to me it's a very incredible story of how Jesus goes about. But he was saying this story. He was teaching the disciples. They were watching from beside him as he walked to that man and touched his eyes. We read in the scripture, they said, oh no, we don't have any bread with us. We forgot to grab bread, Jesus. Jesus said, did you forget? When I fed the 5,000, how many baskets did you pick up? Perception. What do you see, boys? Well, we don't have any bread. Is that all you see? No bread. I'm getting ready to touch a blind man. And all you can think about is bread. Remember the 5,000. How many baskets? And he doesn't stop there with the 5,000. He says, remember the 4,000. How many baskets did you pick up? Seven. Jesus was teaching not only the disciples, he was teaching the Pharisees and those from Herod a lesson. They asked for a sign. Pharisees asked for a sign. Jesus, show us a sign. Jesus said, I'm not going to show you a sign. And then he goes, talks to the disciples, touches the blind man, which if we know Jesus, instantaneous, could have made him whole. But the first touch, what do you see? And the man with his own mouth says, 
I see men as trees walking, which told everybody around, he's not whole. He got a little bit, but he didn't get all he needed. And Jesus was teaching the disciples and teaching the Pharisees. That's how understanding comes. When we come to God and we repent of our sins and we are baptized in His name and we are filled with His Spirit, understanding does not drop upon us. When I was a little kid, I received the Holy Ghost. I was at the age of eight years old. And I remember it to this day. I remember also being baptized in the Penobscot River. I remember that. But you know what? I'm a long ways from where I was at eight years old. I didn't understand everything then. It was line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little there a little and here I am today with a whole lot more understanding but I've got a whole lot more to go but God has touched our hearts not just our eyes today but God has touched each and every one of our hearts and I would say today God let my heart be soft let my heart be pliable that you can mold me, that you can shape me, that you can make me into the vessel that you want me to become. So today, I ask you the question again, what do you see? Oh, you might look up today and say, Brother Darrell, I see men as trees walking. I don't understand everything that's going on. My prayer today, God, touch their eyes again. Touch their eyes again. Touch their heart again. So understanding will come and they will receive the miracle that God wants them to have. Because after the second touch, that Jesus performed on this blind man. He raised his eyes and said with his own mouth, I see clearly. I see clearly. If you would turn with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. There are many, many people that we walk past every day we drive by every day in the workplaces maybe at Walmart at Sam's at the uh, convenience store that you have up here wherever it might be we walk past people every day every day what do we see are we so busy about our business that we forget we must be about our Father's business. When I look at someone in the car next to me, do I see just a person there scurrying about, going about their day, or do I see a soul that God loves and he wants to touch them. And he wants to reach out to them. John chapter 4 and verse 35. Reads like this. Say not ye. There are yet four months. And then cometh harvest. Behold I say unto you. Lift up your eyes. And look on the fields. For they are white, all ready to harvest. I want to tell you today, as Brother Johnny said earlier, we are in the last days. We don't have much time left, folks. We don't have much time left. I remember as a kid, being at home and feeling like I had been left behind. Anyone ever felt that? 
One of the scariest things as a kid, after being especially in an incredible service, and that week, maybe everyone, maybe they were playing a joke on us, who knows? But we couldn't find mom and dad. Couldn't find my brothers and my sisters. And looking through the house from room to room, oh no, they must be outside. And then going outside and looking around and no mom and dad, no brothers and sisters, oh no, and then it dawns on you, could it be, could it be that I've been left behind? What's it going to be like when Jesus comes? And if we really have understanding and we have eyes to see when we leave this service today, we will see people different when we walk out of this place and we get in our cars and we go to lunch this afternoon. When we see those people that we pass every day, we won't just see Susie and Johnny, but we will see someone that needs the Lord. We need to give them what we have. We need to pray that God will touch their lives. He will minister their hearts. He will move upon them to give them His Spirit within their lives. And I can guarantee you, one touch is all it'll take. The psalmist said, taste and see that the Lord is good. You would turn with me in Joel chapter 2 and verse 21. Joel chapter 2 and verse 21. I want to read something here out of the book of Joel that God was promising to the people of Israel. Joel chapter 2 and verse number 21. He said, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Church, I want to tell you today, fear not. Fear not. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord is doing great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Friend, my question to you today as they come to the music, my question to you today is simply this. What do you see? As we stand to our feet today, every head bowed and every eye closed, The Spirit of God has been moving through this sanctuary today. Down every aisle and in amongst every pew. 
You may not have told anyone beside you. But you came today wanting a touch from God. Humanity is such a needy people. We can't live from one day to the next. We can't live from one day to the next. Matter of fact, we can't live from one minute to the next without oxygen. We are such a dependent upon something else in the natural food for the body oxygen for the lungs and the blood blood that pumps through our veins and arteries throughout our whole body so that we can function and live but even more than that We are in such need of a higher power that controls everything in the universe. And to me, it's amazing that he controls everything in the universe, but he takes time out for each and every one of us. He knows where you are today. He sees where you are today. He knows the inner part of man. And he has come today to meet with each and every one of us today to touch our eyes, to touch our understanding so that we can really perceive and see who he really is. He's not a God that stays in heaven that waits for someone to make a mistake and then hits them over the head and blots them out. But He is a God that comes to where we are in our frailty, in our humanness, in our mistakes, and in our understanding. He comes to where we are and he pours wine on our wounds and he wraps us in his bandages and he puts us on his horse and he takes us to the inn to find shelter and strength. Today the master is here. The master is here. I felt it in my spirit when I came in here. I was praying even yesterday and Friday about this message. I felt the Lord grip my heart first and say, Daryl, you want to reach for every young person that is under the sound of your voice on Sunday morning. And let them know you're not alone. You are not alone. The God of heaven, the God of the universe loves you so much that he has come to this place today and he wants to meet with you one on one. I would ask today every young person under the age of 25 if you would make your way to the altar today. If you would come quickly 25 come right here right into the middle 25 and under hallelujah I want to ask you the question today what do you see well Mom and dad, no, 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 no. 
you're up here today. It's you and God. What do you see? Well, I've been taught this in Sunday school. I've been taught that in Sunday school. I pray today, every young person, under the sound of my voice, that you would pray today, God, open my eyes. Let me see how you really are. I want each young person to find someone to pray with. Just one. Find one to pray with. Find one. Find a partner. Find a partner. There you go. Find a partner. The adults that are here today, I want you now to come in behind these young people. But I want the young people to lay your hands upon your partner, your prayer partner. And I want us to begin to pray together that God would open our eyes that we could see who he really is today, who we serve today. He's not just a God up there that we don't know, but he's a God that is understanding, that cares about each and every one of us. That's it. Let's pray to him today. God, open my eyes that I can see who you really are today. Open my understanding today, God. Let me see who you really are. I've heard about you, God. I've heard the stories about you, Lord. I know you uh, turned water to wine. I know you raised the dead. I know you fed the 5,000. But, God, I want to see you, who you really are in my life today. <laughs> Oh, God, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my understanding. Open it today, Lord, that I can really see who you are today. Open my understanding. Open my perception today. Oh, God, I want to see you. Oh, I need thee. Open my understanding. Every yes. hour, every hour, I need you, God. I need, I need you in my life today, Jesus. Oh, I can't live without you, God. Whether it's in the school, in the public now, school system, or whether it's in a I Christian school, whether it's on the college campus, God, I need you, Lord. Every I hour of every day. Every moment, God, I need your presence. I need your spirit. I need you, Lord. I need. Oh, help me to see you, Lord. Help me to see you. Help me to see you, God. Help me not just understand and see you as trees walking, but God, help me to see clearly. I really, really want to see you today, Jesus. I want to see you today. I want to see you today. Bless me now. Oh God, I've got to see you. Jesus. I've got to see you. I come to thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee.